My Wife's Movie Club watched the 2010 Christopher Nolan movie Inception. This film is about how movies are made to influence others, to plant the seed of an idea in the hopes that it will grow in the minds of the hearts of the audience. The medium for this manipulation in, is a dream, where the minds are more susceptible to new ideas. The dream is an allegorical way of talking about going to the movies. If done well, films and movies take you into another world. They suck you in and occupy your mind. Then it ends, the lights goes on, and you return to your life, thinking about how you, what you saw in the movie or the film, but after a while, the memory fades, just like a movie. Poorly made movies don't do this as well, sometimes even reminding us how ridiculous they are as we are watching. Both are for entertainment, and both are uh, may be used to plant ideas. Sometimes the idea is overly overtly pushed, scripted into the plot, and others are more subtle, uh, some movies may have only one idea of telling a story to entertain, but because of the people involved, they can't help but have their ideas carried over into the film. So, intentional or not, the movie you are watching is attempting to influence you. Inception starts with a team trying to extract information or steal information from the mind of a Mr. Saito while the team and Mr. Saito are sharing a dream. Dom Cobb, played by DiCaprio, uh, is the lead for this heist and the main character. He uh, fails to steal all the information he needs from Mr. Saito uh, from his mind. And from here, the movie quickly turns into a, hey, it was extraction, but now it's going to be an implanting ideas movie. Sato reveals that the extraction was an audition, and he wants to use the skills of Mr. Cobb's team to implant an idea into someone else. Not extract or expose, but to implant. Uh, the concept of implanting is a powerful one. Extraction can be used to neutralize the opponent or comp you know, compete with them. But implanting uh, can be used to turn someone into a teammate or corrupt them into abandoning the fight altogether. The team debates whether inception is possible or not. There is a difference in hearing a person's ideas and adopting them as your own. If they are someone else's ideas, you know where they came from and understand the association. Therefore, as an outsider, they would not typically drive your behavior or your actions. For example, when you see a movie and the hero or the villain explains why they are doing something, it doesn't change you. It, it may confirm what you already believe, which is a way to embolden your beliefs, but it doesn't change them. Uh, there may be an exception to this, but either way, you know the origin of the idea, so it makes it easy to diffuse. The difficulty with inception, or implanting an idea that changes someone, is that it must be implanted in a way that makes them believe it was their idea. Their beliefs and ideas will drive their behavior, and because they were created in their own mind, they're the best of ideas. That's how we think. Um, this would be considered true inspiration, which according to the film is not quite impossible, but very, very hard to pull off. So how is this done? In Inception, they share a dream. The dream has been created by a team of experts. The dream is a story or a presentation of ideas that has been crafted in a way to show you what to think about something, uh, be it romance, action, adventure, drama, horror, or war. This is the shared dream with you and others all experiencing a new reality as if watching a film. To create the vision, we first have Don Cobb, again by, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, he is the producer, and sometimes the director. He specializes in making the dreams, building the plot, and using all the others to craft the ideas in the most penetrating way. Arthur uh, makes Cobb's vision work. He is the nuts and bolts of the production. He finds a way to give it a kick and acts as the production crew and, the, and part writer. Uh, then we have Paige's character. She's the architect who uses special effects, camera movement, or cinematography to build the world of these ideas. Each angle, if done right, can point you to the theme or the emotional connection with the words and the actions of the, the film. Uh, then we have Eames, who's played by Tom Hardy. He is the actor. Uh, in the film, he literally performs identity theft, and as he acts out the actions of the another person, as he plants the ideas into uh, Robert Fisher or Murphy's mind, uh, just like 
the film will plant ideas into our minds through the actors, actions, words, etc., etc., etc. Then we have Mr. Saito. He is the executive producer. It's his money, his promises, uh, etc. Uh, without him, there would be no budget or incentives. He brings the team together. Arguably, the most important team member would be Yusuf, the chemist. He drugs everyone with music and sound. Uh, he is the Foley artist. He is the one that alters the mood, sedating the audience and manipulating the audience. And then finally, uh, Mal, or Mal Cobb, uh, is the self-interested and narcissistic nature of all the people who are in the cast we just mentioned. Uh, their individual ideas and past actions sometimes surface or come up during the inception of the movie. Uh, it blurs the or distracts or shatters the illusion of and uh, when that happens uh, you take the risk of ruining the message or the effect that you're trying to have. Uh, each decision made, if done correctly, is to present the story in a way that will influence and manipulate emotions. And the way we think, the way we call, you know, they may call it education or entertainment, and, and that may be true, but there are definitely those who are trying to change your mind, even brainwash the audience to side with something, be outraged, or act accordingly. In the film, the manipulation is a lie, but the outcome is just an idea. For Robert, this is cathartic. It allows him to love his father, to gain new self-esteem. Uh, the manipulation and lie allow Robert to see things from a new perspective. I don't, I don't think this is saying you need to lie to manipulate or change someone's mind, but I'm saying the movie is a lie. The shared dream of any film is not technically true. Uh, even for documentaries, not, does, it does not give you reality. They are you know, frame parts, pieces, ideas, uh, some real, some not, some bias, some not. The ideas you take away from a film can be good. It often isn't, but it's not because of the nature of the manipulation. Here are a couple of manipulation uh, techniques that filmmakers use to incept ideas into the minds that we can see within Inception. Uh, the first is a direct approach. This is where the film tells you outright. It's dialogue telling you what to think. The director approach is not usually effective, e even when you agree with it. Uh, but it can be used to build common ground, to build trust, if, it, if everyone believes it, if everyone's a like-minded person. But directly telling someone to change is about 3% effective. So di directly uh, approaching something with direct dialogue, telling the audience, breaking the fourth wall and saying, you must change, uh, is not expected to work. Um, and you don't see this often in good movies, uh, but it can be coupled with other methods to make it more effective. Uh, secondly, there's the indirect approach. This is where the dialogue is something in the movie that is related to your own life, but not directly. It's inferred or allegorical. Uh, like the concept in Inception when they want to go in a dream within a dream, and they say, downward is the only way forward. Uh, there's an idea there, uh, this way to make progress, right? But it's taking a step down down a path uh, to get to where it can apply to your life as well. So th this teaches us that not every decision we, we make will immediately make everything better. Sometimes uh, when we make mistakes, we take a detour, we fail, uh, there's no easy way out, and so there's only this downward way to go. This is very Christian idea or theme that the highest of all had to condescend, go down uh, below everyone else to save everyone else. Um, this is like the LDS theology of the fall of Adam. The fall was downward but forward. Uh, the idea is not threatening uh, because it's not direct. Uh, many times you may not even see the idea was intended for you. Now add to these two methods the emotional appeal. Emotions are used to impact the seed of the idea uh, to make it take root. Right? It is not by facts or by reason alone. The film uses emotions to open up the soil of the soul to allow the idea to take seed or to be planted. Uh, in Inception, the idea and the values of Robert, which is again us, uh, his beliefs are not under attack, but his emotional ties to his father and his interpretation of his familial rejection and failure. Then we also can add fun, fear, fantasy, adventure. These are all the distractions. Uh, these are the worlds created in the movie, the fi and film that distract you from, you know, the brainwashing, the inception, the onslaught of false ideas and other manipulations. 
you typically don't go out with the intention of being manipulated or, you know, or even for a reality, you go to take a break from reality, to be entertained. Uh, this is the opiate of the films. You think you're going to go to have a good time. You're not, not noticing each time you go, your mind is being influenced and changed. You see things you don't agree with so much, you begin to accept them and become them. It's like the Alexander Pope quote where he says, Vice is a monster so frightful mean, as to be hated needs but to be seen, yet seen too oft, familiar her face, we first endure, then pity, then embrace. By far the most effective method of inception, whether it be direct, indirect, using emotional, using distractions, whatever it may be, is to plant doubt. Uh, either by giving information or examples, contrasting situations that don't seem to add up, or with your current beliefs, or showing hypocritical behavior in others, or asking questions to illustrate your own ignorance, all of which is programmed to create doubt. This last type of manipulation is the most important to Inception because it puts the audience, or Robert in the movie, in a state where he is trying to make sense of something. There's a void that has been created because of this doubt, and he now has to fill this void with ideas himself. Now, luckily for the Inceptors, uh, they have used markers, emotions, and uh, direct advice and indirect advice to help him formulate an answer for himself. They've given him all the recipe, as it were, and let him bake it himself. Uh, doubt pushes anyone into a more self-generated reason for change without realizing the manipulation and influences that shaped it. Films are careful not to become the adversary, but a friend who helps with the doubt. They try not to create a conflict that will make him defend his current position, but to sow doubt so that he will run away from it himself. Here's a quick example. In, in, the, in Inception, the direct approach is asked as Robert is told he shouldn't follow his father's footsteps. He is told there is a safe uh, with a new will inside of it, and somehow he knows the combination. This is directly telling Robert, and Robert is us, right? We're the audience. Uh, then there's the indirect approach. Later, Robert is confronted by the typical film trope of a trusted advisor is actually a traitor to his father. But uh, the traitor uh, to his father is an ally to him. The doubt is planted. Robert starts to see he is under attack. And then he is distracted by Mr. Charles, who tells him this is just a fake world. And he fights the idea that maybe he should create something for himself. Finally, they add in a third level with emotion. Uh, during the heart-to-heart -heart, Robert and his father, with Robert and his father, Robert is not sure what to believe about his father anymore. He finds there's a safe, uh, but inside it's a pinwheel. The idea of love for his son. The father does not want me to be him, he thinks, but to be my own self. He had to fill that void himself. Uh, the final concept we'll talk about is the totem. This is a way of discerning dream from reality. It is something only you know. It, now, it may seem obvious to us who know the difference between film and reality, but the concept is about the ideas and the interactions. Are your beliefs based on reality or a story you are being told? The totem is an anchor for your truth. It tells you if what you're being told is reality or a manipulation. The ending of the movie shows Dom's and formerly Maul's totem spinning. It wobbles and then the film cuts to black. Does the totem tip over? Well, yes. If you interpret Dom's experience as meaningful and not just a dream and that he actually does accomplish something in the movie, it tips over. If you interpret this dream as a movie, then the totem continues to spin. It does not tip over in the film, and then it goes to black. And then you realize the movie is over, and the totem of your mind tips over and tells you you're back in reality. The totem has tipped. To say that the totem has not tipped over is to say that you've lo you are lost in the manipulation. You're not able to say what is true and what is not. You can't tell the difference. That's the totem continuing to spin. In conclusion, no one dreams like the dreams of inception. No one has that level of control, detail, or dreams within dreams to such levels. But the film isn't really about dreams. 
it's about influencing and planting ideas. So when the story has some inconsistencies, that's the movie acting as a totem. I like this movie. To me, Inception is well a well-made science fiction and action adventure movie. The ideas are interesting, the music and filming are beautiful, and the actors' distractions and unbelievability of the movie don't ruin it. How complex is the idea? Simply enough. No idea is simple when you need to plant it in somebody else's mind. 